I'm just going to preface this video by saying that I am not the best at redstone, okay? <laughs> Nor am I the best at compacting my redstone. So this video is basically what I've learned in my however many years I've been doing redstone. So it's just my opinion. Hello everybody, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> because we're not doing a tutorial, no. We are looking at a theme. And that theme, as you can tell by the thumbnail and the name, we are looking at compacting. Now, literally every video that I make has one of either these... Why is it raining? <laughs> what? Uh, hold on. Like I was just saying, I either get one of these two comments. Either someone saying, wow, your build is so compact. I wish I could make it so compact. Or I get the complete opposite. Someone saying, wow, this build is rubbish. I can make mine so much smaller. Judging by these two comments, we can see that the Redstone community as a whole care about compactness. And we can see why compacting is so popular, can't we? Because if you have a compact build, it can fit in anywhere in your base and it doesn't really take much space. And to be honest, it just makes some Redstone look really, really cool. So I can see why people like to compact their builds. So through this video, what I'm gonna try and do is show you some tips and tricks, some little things you can do to try and compact your redstone. But just before we do that, I need to tell you a bit of a problem. Now the problem does not lie with compacting a build. No, not at all. The problem lies within the redstone community because there are a few people and they are a minority but they evaluate a build solely due to its size. So basically, they judge if a build is good, medium, or bad <laughs> solely by how compact it is. And that, to me, is a really big problem. And here's why. Now, of course, this does not apply to those people who are trying to make the smallest possible of a build because they are doing it for completely different reasons. They are trying to make a build really nice and small. So this doesn't apply to them. But basically, people forget when you compact a build, Several things about that redstone takes a hit, or what like. What I've done is I've laid out a graph. Yay! So, as you can see here on the left, we have our compactness. <laughs> so as we compact a build, as we make the build smaller, several things change. First of all, the price of the build goes way up. Now you've definitely seen this in my videos because you guys say it a lot that I use a lot of observers, and that is very true. If I wanted to, I could make builds with redstone repeaters, dust and torches, and very cheap things like that, but I couldn't make it so compact. Whether that matters to you is your own personal opinion. But to me, I don't really mind about my builds being expensive. So to me, that doesn't matter. The second thing, usually which takes a hit, is the speed of the build. So usually, now I'm saying usually because sometimes this doesn't happen, <laughs> but in most cases, when you make a build nice and small, the build gets slower. So again, does that matter to you? <laughs> Do you want to compact your builds to the detriment of the speed? And again, that is completely up to you. So for example, those people who want to make the smallest build, they don't really care about how fast it is. But if you're a survival player and you want to get into a base really quickly and you're making a door, for example, you might want your door to be quite quick. So you may need to build it less compact. So it's finding the right balance for you. And the last thing is the look of the build. Now I'm not talking about the rest end because like I said earlier, compact builds look great. But I'm just talking about the build itself when it functions. So do you have those annoying little flashing blocks? Do you have your build completely in sync or is it not in sync? Do you have redstone exposed and things like that? All those things, again, take a hit when you compact, usually. <laughs> now, because you're trying to compact to a, such a small degree, sometimes you cannot help but maybe make your build not in sync. And again, that's up to you. Do you want your build to be in sync? Well, then if you do, you might need to make it look slightly larger. But then if you don't care, then make it as small as you like. You can see it's all about balance. What do you want to build? And now this is where the problem becomes apparent. Because for example, if I build something, which I know I could build smaller, but I don't want to because I don't want to take a hit to the other things, some people will say that's a rubbish build because it's not the smallest. So a lot of my doors, for example, you can make them way smaller. But again, I don't really want to make them smaller because they would take a hit on the other things, for example, the speed. So I'm not getting at anyone who thinks differently to me. If you want to make the smallest, feel free. If you want to make the fastest, feel free. Don't judge someone else's build by what you value in redstone. Okay, now that I've got that off my chest, now let's look at a few ways which we can compact our builds. Okay, so how do we actually compact our builds? Well, our first point is something that you probably don't want to hear. <laughs> 
and that's give yourself time. Don't expect to make an eight by eight really compact in 10 minutes, say. Give yourself some time to work. Now, the second point is to know your build. Now, you may be thinking, well, how do I know my build if I haven't made it yet? Well, what I mean is this. Know the piston layout, for example, and the timing of your build. So for example, a three by three piston door, know which pistons go where and which pistons fire in what order, because then that will make your compacting so much easier if you exactly know in your head what happens first and then what happens last. Our third point is to give yourself parameters to what you're building. So literally in your head, build a cube <laughs> around your build. Say I will not build out of this eight by eight by eight square, for example, because that will force you to be a bit more creative. Now, this really leads on to our next point, which is point four, to be reasonable. Because if you build parameters, for example, three by three by three to make a triple piston extender, that you're not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> so you've gotta be reasonable with yourself. And that goes along with our first point again, time. Be reasonable with your time. Don't expect to build something very, very quickly. Again, be reasonable with yourself. Our fourth, is it our fourth point or our fifth? Um, now tip number five is to watch other people make redstone. Now this is not a shameless plug to my own build and I'm not saying that you should just copy other people but basically you can learn from their creativity. You can see maybe a redstone technique they use and then try to use that in your own builds. Basically try and learn from other people. I know I do it and I'm sure a lot of you can benefit from other people watching other people as well. And finally tip number six and that is to know your components well. Know the quirks of all your components very well. For example, a repeater, if you put a pulse for a repeater, that pulse will actually be lengthened on four ticks over three ticks. So try and know those little quirks about your components. Wow, I'm actually losing my voice here. I've been waffling for far, far too long. Let's actually look at now some practical uses. So actually look at some redstone, yay. Now my first tip is all about pistons and torches. Now you probably know this already, but for those who don't, basically if you were to power a piston, even if that piston cannot move, that piston will turn on in theory and any torch on it will turn off like this. Even though that piston hasn't moved, those torches have turned off, so they've inverted. And then obviously, when I flick this lever, the opposite happens. Now this is super useful for compacting. Now you may be thinking though, why would you use this and not something like this, literally a repeater going into a block with the torch? And eight out of the 10 times, you'd be right, you'd be right to use one of these. But that's not always the case because this actually is three high, one, two, three, when this one is only two high. And also if your build is super compact and you have pistons next to this one, this will not interfere with that piston, whereas this one will. So again, it's up to you when you use it, but they're definitely useful to know. Now, second tip is all about these things, comparator pulse extenders. Now, I use these quite a lot because they are very useful, but I actually don't really like using them. Firstly, because they are super large, as you can see. And secondly, you cannot use a normal observer pulse to power it. You may be thinking, well, you're using an observer here. How does this work? Well, it's because this repeater is on four tick delay. Now, like I said earlier, a repeater on four tick delay extends the pulse. If I were to put this on one tick, you can see this wouldn't work. So I couldn't literally just run an observer into this. I would need an observer with a four tick delay. Now, why am I pointing out the deficiencies of a simple pulse extender? Well, it's because I actually seldom use these. I like to use something like this and it's called an RS null latch. Now, basically what an RS null latch does, it has an item, as you can see in one of the droppers, as you can see at the moment, it's in our top dropper. And if you were to power that dropper, that item is gonna move from that one to the bottom and then when I want to move it back, I basically power the bottom dropper, then it moves up to the top. So that's how it works. Now I use these things mostly for pistons. So when I want to extend a piston, I then leave it extended for a good length of time and then retract it. Now, of course you can use a pulse extender like this, you can see it extends and then sometime later it retracts. But like I said, this is very large. So how do we use this? Well, I would have something powering our RS null latch to extend that piston. And then when something else is done, what I wanted to do with these maybe, maybe other pistons have moved around, then an observer will power this top block, moving the item down, retracting our piston. It's very niche, but when you know how to use it properly, it's really, really useful. Now something really cool about an RS null latch 
Normally you power the block next to the dropper, which will make it fire. But if we use observers directly next to the droppers, like this, then the opposite happens. <laughs> so at the moment, our item is in the bottom dropper. So to get the item out the top, I power the top dropper. Oh, sorry, the top observer. Very strange that. Now, next tip is about observers detecting repeaters. Now, I see this a lot. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. So if I was to power this after four ticks, this observer would give a pulse like that. And then the opposite when I turn it off. The only problem with this is people use this system too much. <laughs> Instead, what you can do is something like this. Remember that a repeater can go on top of an observer. If you want the pulse to go down, it can be in front, like over there. That's fine. It can be in the side and it can be on the top. It really doesn't matter as long as the face is detecting toward that repeater. Now, all these observers will pulse at the same time, as you can see. Now, quickly talking about compacting with observers, I actually have a whole video dedicated to how to use these things, and I'll put the link in the description. Now, one of the most overpowered uses of observers is with redstone lamps. Now, why is this such a good combination? Well, when I power this redstone lamp, obviously it's gonna turn on, and then this observer will detect it, powering this piston, obviously. But this is where it gets really good. When I turn this lever off, this redstone lamp actually stays on for a very, very short period of time. Then the observer detects it. And then we have our piston extending like that. You can see it's just a tiny bit of delay, but that tiny bit of delay is super useful again in compacting. Honestly, the amount of builds which use another repeater when you don't need to, and you could just use one of these is quite staggering. <laughs> okay, now let's try and apply some of the things we have learned so far. Now we're gonna do this by using flush to the floor, double piston extenders. So you can see this one's the largest, but it definitely is the cheapest. And then it goes along, this one being the second smallest, but then second most expensive. And then lastly, this one being the most expensive, but definitely being the smallest. So this one, as you can see, is just using redstone dust, repeaters, and torches, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so when I power this lever, this block will power, powering this dust, which will power this block, which then make this piston extend. So this block, uh, piston now will move up to here. At the same time, this torch will turn off, unpowering this block, allowing this torch to turn back on, which will power this block, which will make this piston extend from here, like this. Brilliant. Now, if I just remove this circuit for a second, when I turn this lever off, this block will unpower, unpowering this dust, unpowering this torch, meaning this piston will then retract to here. This piston will still be extended for a very short period of time. This torch will turn on, powering this block, then forcing this torch to turn off, unpowering this block, meaning that this piston will then retract, like this. Okay, now we're left with a decision. Do we power this piston again, moving this piston down to here? And then do we power this piston, moving this block down to here? Or do we use a delay circuit? Now, of course, we're trying to keep this build cheap, so we're gonna use a delay circuit. Okay, so how about our second one? How does this one work? Well, this one extends pretty much exactly the same as this one, like this. Now on the retraction, first of all, that piston will retract, and then this one will, two ticks later. But at the same time, when that torch turns back on, this redstone lamp will then turn on. This observer will detect that redstone lamp powering this block, like this. And then finally, we have to retract this piston again. So we do that by having a four tick delay from this block into the observer into a block like that. So this build is a little bit slower than this one, but as you can see, it is a lot smaller. And like I said, it is a bit more expensive. Now with our final build, it works pretty much the same as this one, but obviously in a one wide variant. <laughs> so the extension works the same, but on the retraction, when this torch turns back on, this observer detects it, which pulses, then this observer detects this observer pulsing, putting a pulse into this block, meaning that this piston can pulse, moving that piston down to there. At the same time as it's moving that piston, this uh, redstone lamp is turning on, and then a little bit later it turns off. Then this observer detects that turning off, pulsing into this block, which then gives the final pulse into this piston, like that. And here we can see the very practical uses of using a redstone lamp. 
Because even if we use something like a hopper or a dropper, our build will be too fast. As you can see, if I use a hopper, again, it's too fast. If I use a torch, it'll be too fast. We have to use a rest and lamp. You can use a repeater on two ticks, but then that makes the build a little bit bigger. So why would you do that? <laughs> Another tip I can give you is to learn monostable circuits. Knowing how these things work help compact your build so much. <laughs> so a rising edge gives a pulse when the lever turns on, but then nothing when it turns off. A falling edge does the opposite. So when the lever turns on, nothing happens. But when it turns off, we have a pulse. And then a dual edge does both. So we have a pulse on the rising, so when it turns on, and a pulse on the falling when it turns off. Now, learning when to use these, again, can be so useful for compact redstone. I just want to apologize because you were probably hoping for some more tips and tricks, but this video could go on for ages, 20, 30, 40 minutes, and I just don't want it to be like that. I want just to show you a few basics and then for you to try it out for yourself because you learn a lot better when you try it yourself, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of it from me. It's been a bit of a different video. I hope it was okay, but if you liked it, please give us a like, and if you really loved it, uh, what do I normally say? And if you really loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one, and I'll see you later. Bye! So if you could take one thing away from this video, take this. Do not judge a build just by how compact it is. There are lots of other factors that make a good build. Okay? <laughs>